I like to think, I know, that one of the proudest and most accomplishments I achieved at Washington was meeting my friend. She helps run, she runs the show, she's the office queen. She makes things happen. My brother Michael, he runs K1 Hospitality. Patrick Elrich, and he basically just does everything and anything. There's nothing Patrick will say no to. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate you. The, one of the things that when when they asked him to do this talk, I said, well, what are some things that I would... Check. Mic check? Yeah. Is that good? All right. I'll have a screen. And what's something I want to talk about that I want to learn more about? And I want to dig in a little deeper. A lot of, a lot of what's going on in today's world is... You know, a lot of confusion about, well, what's the future of work? And so I thought, well, I'm going to dig into this. And some of, the, some of the clues, some of the things that we can look for for answers, we go back in history, we can learn, observe our own experiences, uh, we can do some research, ask some questions, put things in perspective, and, and think again, because just as soon as you think you have the answer, things have changed. So, I pulled out from my list of favorite quotes a few things that might be appropriate for today, but 8% of success is showing up. And it is so true because there's so often that you can be just like, no, I'm like, you know, just get started, just get going, think good things will happen. Uh, build your dreams or someone else, or someone will hire you to build theirs. And this is this is a double, you know, this is kind of a double-edged sword because this world needs people who are uh, starting and growing businesses and need a lot of people helping them. And I have always been I I don't I think that once once in my life for about two years I took a W2. I've, I've just never been someone that was uh, Getting a steady paycheck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's rough. Whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. And it's so true because sometimes you just have to continue to be positive, things will work out. And I, I am a Christian, and I'm happy and proud to say it. And uh, this is the one that says, If whom I have to give him, much shall be required. And I do truly believe that. All right, so we're going to take a trip. We're going to go back almost 26, uh, almost uh, 2 million, 600 thousand years ago, 2.6 million years. I can just almost picture it. And these hunter gatherer types are out. And I don't like how these sticks were used, but these stones, and just, there's got to be a better way, right? And then that how inventions happen, innovation. It's like there's got to be a better way. So it, it only took them going from stone tools, it only took uh, 2 million. Uh, 588,000 years to, to figure out how do we get these things we're hunting to come to, you know, come closer where we are. You know, it, I think, doesn't it seem like a long time? <laughs> uh, but then, you know, things are happening on a more regular clip, and uh, we have the metal tools, and then someday people said, you know, I am so tired of this guy telling the same story over and over. Somebody write it down, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get into the Industrial Revolution, where, you know, after the, you know, this, these, these monks were getting tired of writing these books over and over, they said, please, somebody figure this out. And so they came up with the printing press, and, the, you know, 
things just started taking off. We got the automobile and we sent, you know, things just put on there. And now we're like pretty recent. We're, we're things are changing. We got the, all these things, and we got cloud computing, fintech, blockchain, cryptocurrencies. Uh, we got the large uh, language machine learning that's just it. it Though, let me ask if I raise your hand, who's using Chat GPT or has a Chat GPT in this room? About the same as this morning, which is interesting. Then kids aren't quite on it. Alright, so um, a lot of this is a matter of perspective. The and I think if the one thing I I I think I do well is I, I, I take, I sit back, and I look at the situation, and I try to look at it from all angles, from each person's perspective. I think that's what made me a good commercial real estate broker because it really does require bringing parties together to figure out how we both can get something out of this. And I thought these start things were kind of interesting. Stats and finances. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. All right, so, you know, this, uh, while I was in school, this top uh, house up there, <laughs> it was a, a funny story. And I'll, 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 uh, a very good friend of mine, Eddie Bostic, was the soul, is, was sitting in a classroom at Marshall. And the, 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 the older gentleman and ended up being a doctor who was just, observing the class, was over her telling the guy next to him that he was got a bid for his house, for painting his house in the top. And it was like $15,000. He just thought that was a little steep. And Eddie met him at the door when he was leaving. He said, by the way, I overheard you saying that you might be a house painted, and I paint houses. Now I have my profession, I paint houses. And so, we arranged to go over. <coughs> we had never painted a house before. <laughs> but we had a three story, big three story house in Hong So we go over with our clipboards and our tape measures, and we walk out the front like, like we know what we're doing. And we saw, yes, $10,000 we can paint. By 4th of July, when we're done, we, we, we split what was left, it ends up our supplies were. You know, three thousand dollars. We just had thirty-five hundred dollars in our pocket. And in nineteen eighty-four, eighty-five, that was that was a lot of money for a young man who really didn't know how to spend money yet. Um, and I said, you know, I'm either going to spend this in College Hill or I'm going to do something. <laughs> so I went in and I I was. Coach Elliott at the time was our head football coach, and his wife, or lady, was a real estate agent. I said, well, maybe I'll just buy. And it so happened, we got kicked out of our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> because we were having fun spending for that piece by our right. And so we were at, so we needed some place to go. So I said, is there any place that you can hey, I have $3,000 to put towards a, a house or whatever. She found me at 11 Age in Boswell, a VA non qualifying loan. All I had to do was come up with $3,000. I was in business. I had a five bedroom house. My roommates uh, helped pay the mortgage. And we had a good time. The next summer, I, I hired 15 football players to go out, and we painted 15 houses the next summer. Um, the year after that, I went to work at Bill Lewis Realtors as an intern. I I did all kinds of intern type stuff from from cutting from cutting the fax papers that had rolled up and and, and, and I had to cut them and copy them and collate them and get them to where they went. You know, faxes were great, but they were a mess. And <laughs> I went down to the, I had to go to Wolf's every day and take the the film and and, and with instructions, get 20 of these, 50 of this, this picture, 100 of this one, and then I would take the film and pick up the ones from the day before, and then I would have to come back and I'd have to paste those pictures on papers for flyers. 
So we've come a long way with technology. But in that process, I met a man named Brooks Reynolds. And Brooks was an associated commercial broker's prince of the man. I just kind of met him through probably some events like this, going out in the community as a realtor. And I, had my, I got my license while I was there, and I was a realtor. And I just graduated, and I'm getting ready to go out and get a big job. And they, they gave me a desk and a phone and a phone book. And it was commission only. But I was not going to do it. After about six months, I would say 99 out of 100 people I called already didn't want to talk to people. They already knew Brooks, or they knew Steve Sokro, or they knew Nick Player. They knew these guys already. So I said, and this is shortly after we were married, people. And you remember that was from a pretty skinny time. <laughs> and so I took a job to find the sewers at home just to make ends meet. And we got through, and then shortly after that, they came to the uh, uh, Susan, probably the manager, left and went to another job. And they had a job over as a property manager. And the only thing they had coming was they paid every two weeks. <laughs> and at that point, that, uh, that, was, that was what I needed. So I did that job for a couple of years, and an opportunity came up with Steve Weezer. He called me and said, I have a position I think you'd be good for. They had just taken on three or four different management accounts in town and they needed a the leasing agent. And they had, you know, I wasn't competing with five other guys in my own office. I was the only guy in town I could lease pay. Yeah. And for the next six years, I did a pretty good job. An opportunity, and, you know, things changed. I got a little restless and I said, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I was doing this, I'd do it here. I'd keep my nose for five, six years doing that. And we did. We started KS Commercial with Phil Morris, his son Michael Morris, and another guy with Don Kirkland. We did that for a long time. Up until about 2015. And in the middle, I did this thing called Rules during the Cocktail Party. Some good memories, some not. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it came to my KS Commercial. One of the things that they did to their, to their it's, it has served them well. Is one of the things that KS Commercial is they don't buy the property. They do not invest in commercial real estate. They only work for people who own commercial real estate, which we did that on purpose because we don't want that. We saw in the industry there was a lot of conflict of interest against brokers, and they were, they were doing their own deals, and then you had another one they you were always getting kind of the seconds. Um, but that it has a cost too because every year you have to start over. Like, there's no equity. Every year it's just, what have you done? You know? So I, I got to, I was at the point in my life, I said, we need, we need to change that. And we need to uh, start investing in real estate. And we started uh, K1 Real Estate in about 2015. Bought my first property shortly after that. Uh, one, two, three, seven or eight properties later. We have uh, 650 plus thousand square feet of commercial real estate to be done. And we're, we're, I think we're doing some good things. I think, you know, we'll, uh, time will tell. These things go up and down. I always tell people in, in your career, you always have what I call peaks, you know, get to the next uh, base camp. You get to that next base camp, you rest a little bit, you figure out what you're going to do next. And then the next thing, you're probably going to have to go down about and, and to get up that next hill. And it seems like every time in my career is kind of going down, it's like this, uh, <clears throat> you know, you get comfortable at base camp. And you get to, and, and, and I don't like being comfortable, I guess. So we got to, you know, take that next venture, and sometimes you got to go. Down in the valley for a while before you move back up. Uh, one of the things that we're doing, and kind of ties into what I'm going to say, is we're doing a town site biz hub. It's basically two different spaces within the town site, plus some of the other ven venue spaces that lead over to this. And it's, it's kind of a new twist on co working space and allows people to come in and just take an office for a day or a meeting room for an hour. 
have one office in there at least on a month to month basis, and those type of things. So, I went to my friend Chat GTP and I asked him a question. And, and I want to start at the very basics. I want to start with this, you know, what is work? A lot of people think that work is what you get paid for. Not always. There's a wide range of activities. It involves a, a physical, mental effort used to achieve a purpose. Whether that's earning a living, uh, fulfilling personal goals, contributing to society, or it's just expressing your creativity. And you know, some of the things such as raising children or taking care of a parent are things that I think are the most meaningful. But people just don't seem to think that's work. And it is work. You really take care of my grandson on Fridays and just about carry. <laughs> it's a lot of work taking care of the one year old. The uh, and it's great. It's what good or evil? Well, of course, work is good, right? Well, not always. Uh, you know, if, if work is done uh, in ways that harm people or harm society or the environment, it's not good. I mean, I, I don't know of any. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of hard work and great users. But it's not good work. And there's other you know, there's people that put other people through miserable experiences. That's not good work. Uh, is work that it is uh, what is work ethic? Everybody says you've got a strong work ethic. Well, I, I think more than more than not, work ethic is uh, delaying gratification. What would my future self think about this decision? And I don't think too often, you know, some, and that's a good thing to ask yourself every once in a while. Uh, you know, Julie keeps a, a, a bowl of candy on her counter, and she tests me every day with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then what is meaningful work? Meaningful work is, is, is a matter of perspective. Um, if you're hungry, Starving, you have children that need clothes, you don't have a roof on your head, digging and ditch is very meaningful work. Um, for most of us, and I would presume to say most of us in this room, digging and ditch is not meaningful. Um, and so you ask yourself, well, why do I work? Um, and it's the classic argument paycheck versus purpose. Um, there are, you know, there's times when it comes back to the way of gratification. If you want, if you have a goal, sometimes you have to do things that you would rather not do. Um, and those things change over time with your, you know, different personal circumstances as you evolve, as you as you grow, your goals and, and values also grow. Then you, uh, well, how, you know, I hey, understand. That's what and why I work, but how can I improve my work? And you guys are going to kill me. It's like they get tired of saying this. It's real easy. Over deliver. <laughs> Give more than you get. If you follow that formula, things will take care of themselves. And then you know, they continue to ask to go down this rabbit hole. It's like, well, where do I work? And that is a situation where it's not as obvious anymore. I'm like, well, I work at work. Well, with technology and everything else, sometimes work is site driven. You have to go to work. That's where the people are. That's where the machines are. That's where this are. But that's changing every day. And we're, I think, the entire, the entire industry is trying to figure this out. Remote work versus work at home, work, work in the office, or some type of hybrid, how does that work? And, and a lot of people are, are struggling. So one of the things when I did this, I, I said, well, okay, what are the 10 most interesting conversations or debate topics regarding how I and where we, where we work? Most of, the, of this list is 
I would say with the exception of purpose versus paycheck, most everything on that list I don't think would have been on that list five years ago. Technology is causing these things to become an issue in our lives. But, um, you know, the, there was a, a cartoon I was looking at the other day, the guy's at his desk and he turned around and said, it was like, I get confused. Do I work at home or do, uh, do I work at home or in my office at home? And he's just, he's just confused. It doesn't even, you know, life balance and new things get blended. Um, but the, the one that I think is driving people uh, maybe the spirits, I would say, is this whole automation, advanced machine learning, and job displacement. Because if you haven't been paying attention to what's going on with this, this technology, Machine learning and artificial intelligence is accelerating uh, capabilities of, of automation. Machines are now performing complex tasks that previously only were handled by humans. Uh, automation and uh, machine learning are, are being applied across broader range of industry and job functions than in the past. They don't sleep. They don't need to sleep. They are learning all of the time. And we're feeding them. And some people think that's scary. I think it's the biggest opportunity we will ever see. You take a look back at, at the history of where these innovations come from before. It took us 26, you know, 25 million years to go from stone story agriculture. It takes a millisecond of this technology to advance. It's just so fast. And what's that going to do for, for the people that know how to use that technology? The world is open. The people that don't will soon be displaced. If you think you can work in your pajamas, in your basement, at home, and compete without using the most advanced technology, you will be displaced. That is just, that is what's going to happen. And society is going to have to figure out how to deal with this. The gap between the haves and the have-nots are going, it's going to get wider. When we talk about meaningful work, what does that mean when there, there is simply not enough jobs that that person is skilled for? Because it, it is, it's, it's going to be, it, it is scary, but it's also, it's also an opportunity. And I think that uh, those who look at it as an opportunity, prepare for it, and use it will be rewarded. So if you think about these, again, perspectives, you got a company perspective and a work perspective. From a company, we have increased efficiency and productivity. You have cost reduction, innovation. The cons are it's expensive to implement. It's not something that you can just turn a switch and think, oh, we're, we're plugged into artificial, artificial intelligence. That might happen next year. It'll come, or it's, it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty easy. Today it's not. Dependency on technology. Can you imagine if all of your business was tied in? Sort of is. Everybody's got so much. Uh, most of their business is digital. If the power goes out, your business is out. Your business. That's just the, you know, I mean, we have the public perception and our ethical concerns about these things. Um, from a worker's perspective, there is opportunity for skill development. I can. I, I might be someone who, I think I'm creative, but I, I've never been formally trained in art or in music or in other things. But now, now I have someone who if I can direct with my voice, with my with natural language, this is what I want, and I will get it without going to, you know, 
without having to pay it for this. And, and some people see that as a good thing, and some people see that as a bad thing. So it's going to be, the debate will continue. The uh, other pros, um, reduction in tedious tasks, um, you know, enhanced work condition, job displacement, skill gap, uh, cons of job displacement, skill gap, training. If, if it's hard for a 57, almost 58 year old to keep up with technology, it's just it's coming at you like a fire hose. How do you keep up with this stuff? Well, it's easier if you're like Patrick and you just, you know nothing different. They, they were born with technology. Folks of our age, we're like, whoa, this is, we gotta figure this out. And then there's the wage and unemployment uncertainty. So, I'm going to move just the summary. And I'm going to finish with one of the things that is my mother-in-law's saying. <laughs> if anybody knows my mother-in-law, Mary Elliott, she is the most worried person in the world that I know. Yes. And she just got a flip <laughs> And she, she butt dialed me two or three times a day. <laughs> yeah, she's got these speed dial things, you know, she can't figure it out. <laughs> But she likes to say, things are changing, and they're changing fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what is what, part of this is I, I've got like 50, when I, I put a GGP to work, and I've, I've got like 50 pages of these questions that I've you know, asked. <coughs> and I, they're available at other website, K1 LLC, both this version and the longer one. If anybody has any interest in digging deeper, or you go to chat you can be yourself and ask the same question. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to conclude that I'm going to open it up for questions. And uh, if I don't have them, then we'll get our friend on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk to him about it. And the new version has speech to, yeah, pretty cool. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Have you got any questions? Yes. You know, I have a question. Um, we're sitting in the university setting. Do you think I'm concerned that the university is going to be a little lagging behind in giving us up to speed? And now I'm getting that to the students. I'm going to be lagging behind too. Um, and I know you can't answer that, but if you could speak to it, I just think. I'm, I'm concerned that the universities are not going to be fast enough to get us on board. Well, I, I, you know, I think there's, there's, if, if, if you, you know, let's say you say, I'm going to skip this one. You're going to go. If Patrick said, I'm going to skip this one, he, he, might, he might have a lot of a, 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 some career challenges. Let's put it that way. Let's say if the, United, if the United States says, we're going to stop this, we're going to stop everything with it. The United States will have a, a severe challenge competing with the rest of the world. And that's, that's the reality. I mean, and you can, you can try to put the genie back in the bottle, but it's not going. It's out I mean, it, it is, it's kind of funny. It's one of those things that is both scary and exhilarating at the same time. I can't, you know, I can't wait to see what comes next. My brother will say, he, he gets tired of watching the YouTube videos of what's coming next, you know, like, he's an odd guy here. But anyhow, yeah, it's, uh, and that's, that's why kind of spurred me to, to dig into this video. I said, what's really going on here? And um, the reality is, um, there, there will be competitive advantages that are obtained by some. <laughs> what else we got? We got some smart people here that have to ask some questions here. Karen, what advice would you give to the pinch Nancy Washburn students? 
In today's world, or if I, had, if I could go back to that day, today, you know, if, I, if, if, if I were 18 today, what would I do? I, I would uh, I'd get real friendly with the technology. Um, you know, I, I don't think, and I think it's, it's not even that you have to be a, a quote, coder or a tech, technical genius anymore, this technology will write its own code if you tell it what you want. And that's, uh, you know, so, yeah, I, uh, you know, and, I, and so then the next question, okay, what job is going to displace? Well, I avoid those. Uh, uh, what jobs will it create? There will be, I, I, I truly believe that we are in a world of immense abundance. Uh, the hardest thing in business for me is what not to do. So if I had, you know, better technology helping us do things, uh, we'll probably, it's my nature. <laughs> that answer that? Okay. Yes. How does it affect you? And what do you do to change the way you do things? Excellent question. We are putting our head in the sand, hoping we go through it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what one of the things that we recognize and when we took over the tower, we were we were at sixty percent occupancy. There was already ten percent of occupancy that had already said we're out of here and and made commitments elsewhere. So within two or three months of us dying building, we were down to fifty percent. We're now at about seventy four percent. So one of the things that we believe is that we can compete for whatever market share there is left. Um, there's going to be winners and losers, and we want to be one of the winners. And the way that we're doing that is offering something that is different. We are offering uh, remodel space. We have our own build crew. We can act quicker than anybody else at cost that's less than anybody else. We have, we have an excellent team. We have five guys in our build team, three guys on our maintenance crew, We've, we've invested in the people, and we're also doing things that are, well, the, my brother runs K1 Hospitality. We run a lot of events through the old ballroom, through the town site 16, through other various meeting rooms. We have challenged our team with, all right, our next two adventures are going to be about three months ago, we said if we can lease 40,000 square feet, we will green light apartments on the second and third floor of the uh, post office at 4, uh, 424 South Kansas, and we will green light a social, townsite social club, which is a great place to go get some great food, some great drink, and socialize with friends. At the corner of, at the corner of our property, 500 Kansas, we're 16,000 square feet away. From, from moving that need. So we're trying to do that. the next project after that is the entire third floor will become more of a manage floor with meeting rooms and a large, the third floor walks out to the rooftop of the bank line. So that will be a, a large rooftop patio area to do amenities, social function, events, so there's some things that we're planning to stay ahead of the competition. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is tenants are, are that are, and it's a rare exception right now that we're getting a tenant that is coming in or expanding, that is expanding their square foot. Most of the tenants we're getting are coming from another property, they're coming from 10,000 square feet, they're moving to five. I don't care if we pull our whole building up with 
tax that we're using their short foot with. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we're doing is we're making it easier for them to do that. Because a lot of these tenants are saying, I've got 100 employees, but only 30 of them are coming to work. I don't know, I don't know what, how many square feet I need. Or saying, well, let's, let's build for what you think you need, and we'll, we'll build flex space for the days that you have a large meeting, some, you need all hands on deck, they can come into one of our meeting facilities, they can just go into one of our co working spaces and land there for the day. So that seems to be a good solution for people. One of our tenants who hands this chamber of commerce at least almost the entire 14th floor because when they came to the property, they were there to look at the venue, not to look at office space. And we had a conversation. I like the building, I like what you're doing. Well, what's on this? They said, okay. And I said, okay. Not a bad one. Yes, sir. Not a question, but a couple of quick comments. Um, um, Sigmund Freud has 25 bonds, which are on the library shelf and so on. But somewhere in those 25 bonds are two words that make sense and connect me or uh, excellent presentation. Uh, Freud defines mental health has the ability to love and to work. Yeah. Um, the second idea is um, there's an 80 year study of adult development that started 80 years ago at Harvard. Uh, and every 80 years they interviewed the same people, full battery of tests, interviews, medical, physical workup, etc. The latest edition of that study was just published by a psychologist in Boston uh, called Robert the Waltinger. And the key finding of, and this made the Wall Street Journal, and it's gotten a lot of favorable press. What is the key to the good life? The key, one of the important keys, is connections with people. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I worry less about chat than anyone, as long as we maintain the connections with people. I totally agree, and it's one of the reasons why we want to move forward with our social club. People need a place to go meet other people. Does um, anybody have any questions, either of me or of Chet? <laughs> 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 uh, Anything else? Thank you for having me.